All right, so we're going to start off the lab by weighing out 500 milligrams of trans bean. We're going to tear this, and then we're going to add our trans bean. A little bit more. Right, almost there. Oh, too far, too far. So let's go back a little bit. Let me fix this. All right. That should be close enough. But that's how much we're going to be using for the lab this week. All right, so I have my 100 mil round bottom flask with a stir bar in it. I'm going to add my uh, still bean, trans still bean that I weighed out a second ago. Add that. I'm going to add 10 mL of ethanol. And hopefully you can see that with the stir bar at the bottom, there's a bunch of solid, right? That hasn't dissolved. So now I'm gonna have to heat this on the sand mat with the reflux condenser and let it uh, dissolve. So to do that, I'm gonna move this over the sand mat, which I have in this metal uh, dish here. I'm gonna move this over. Get my reflux condenser. I need to have these line up, right? So I'm going to pull this out a little bit over. And your condenser should fit snugly in your ground glass joint so it should fit all together. Right? So there's no gaps there. You have two lines on your reflux condenser, right? You've got the bottom line, that line should go to the water source, and the top line should go to the drain. So when you turn on your reflux condenser, or turn on your water, the water should fill from the bottom up. So let's get it going here. You should see the water slowly work its way here, work its way up the condenser. You should see the water work its way up, and that's what you want. You want the water to get from the bottom to the top, so you have a solid, um, unbroken line of water, so that when the hot liquid, the hot vapor from heating your liquid, goes up, it hits that, it cools, and condenses back down into the flask. Now I've got this on a lap jack. Right. So I can just take this lab jack and turn it. That's going to lift everything up and allow us to settle the the flask into the sand bath. I'm going to move it around and kind of make sure it gets set in there so that it heats evenly. And we're going to leave this heat for a little while until the solid in the um, reaction mostly dissolves. So at this point, most of the solids dissolved. It's not perfect. You can stop the stirring, you'll see that there's a little bit in there. But good enough. So I'm going to leave the um, camera focused in on the flask because that's where all the action is going to be. I'm going to be pouring 1.2 ml of HBR get it from here, but, through the top of the reflux condenser, so it'll just run down the condenser into the flask, and you should see something happen. Right, so now that happened. 
And we're going to leave this stir for a little while until this starts to dissolve a bit. All right, so this is mostly dissolved. So I had to scrape a little bit to get stuck to the side of that new solution, but it's mostly dissolved now. So now I'm gonna add the 0.8 ml of hydrogen peroxide to the top of the condenser again. Again, we're gonna leave this focused on the bottom of the flask because that's where the action is. Now from here, we're going to let this stir for about 20 or 30 minutes until the solution is cloudy and there are some other changes. So you'll have to watch that for a bit. All right, at this point, the reaction has run for about 20 minutes. You can see that the solution has changed. So it's a pretty good indication that it's done. So what we need to do now is turn off the heat. And then I'm just turning the lab jack and lowering the sand bath away from the flask. And now I'm going to let this cool to room temperature for a few minutes before I do the neutralization with base. So now at this point, the solution has cooled some. So we need to check its pH. We're just gonna take a stir rod and put it in here. A little bit of a solution on the end. Touch it and you can see that it's red, which means it's acidic. So we need to slowly add sodium bicarbonate to make the solution more basic. So you want to add it slowly because sodium bicarbonate bubbles, right? It releases CO2 as you add it. So we're just going to add a little bit at a time and try to get this solution a little bit more basic. So it's not bubbling too much. So now let's check our pH again. See where we're at. We get this in there. Okay, green is closer to neutral, but we want to get this, which is about where we wanted to get it. We want to get it around pH 5 to 7. So we're like right in the right ballpark here. Let's add just a little bit more just to make sure we're good. And that should be about that. Right. So there we go, a nice green color, being neutral pH. Now at this point, we need to cool this in an ice bath, which I will have set up here in a sec. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move the hot plate carefully in the uh, sand bath away. I'm going to put an ice bath that I've already prepared underneath this. And then again, I'm going to use the lab jack. It's going to twist. I'm going to bring this up there. I'm going to let this cool for a little while to allow more crystals to form. And then we'll come back and we will filter it off. So now that the solution is cold, I have to do a vacuum filtration. So I have um, clamped a sidearm flask, so a flask that has a little, uh, I guess, nipple on the side. 
and I put in a Thomas adapter so I can make a good make a good seal. And then I take a Buchner funnel, and it has big holes in the top. And I'm going to add a piece of filter paper to it so that you don't just have your stuff run through. I'm going to put that on top. Make sure that all seats together. You want to use then some heavy weld tubing. The vacuum tubing, you're going to put one side of that on the flask. And the other side is going to go to the yellow vacuum um, nozzle that's in the hood. Now, we want to make sure that we have a good seal with the um, filter paper. So we're going to wet it with a little bit of ethanol. So I've changed our angle a bit. We're going to take a little bit of ethanol. I'm going to add this and it's going to kind of stick the filter paper down. I pull vacuum on it real quick. So kind of suck it down onto that so we have a good seal. Now I can take my solution. It has been neutralized. And it's going to pour that over the round bottom flask. Oops, I lost my stir bar. And then I'm going to pull vacuum on that. Okay. And that's going to pull the solution through quickly. So we're not here all day trying to let it filter. And then we're going to rinse the flask with some ethanol to try to rinse down all that solid off the sides. I'm going to give that a swirl. We're going to add that to our... Now this ethanol has been cooled. I had it in an ice bath off camera. So we are using cool ethanol. So again, we're going to rinse it again. Like that. And then we're going to rinse this with a little bit of cold water. So I'm just going to steal some from my ice bath here. Rinse it with some more cold water. I worked with a little bit of ethanol afterwards. I kind of did that in the wrong order. Then we'll rinse it with some cold ethanol. The ethanol is better to rinse with second because it has a lower boiling point. So the, the crystals will just dry faster than if you have water on them. So we'll pull that solution through and we will let it um, sit for a little while to dry and then you will get the mass. So I've let air go through this now for a few minutes by pulling vacuum over the uh, over the solid. And when I reach in here, get the stir bar out of here. Right, and now I'm going to just carefully scrape the solid off of the filter paper and get that onto this watch glass that I weigh. Get all the solid out of there that I can. Right? Try not to lose any. Right? And now I'm going to just use this pair of forceps or tweezers. I'm just going to grab our filter paper here so I can brush off any solid that is left on it and do my best to get all of it off. Now I'll be able to get the weight of the watch glass and the solid, and I'll be able to figure out how much my solid weighed. So now I can weigh the watch glass and the solid. And this is the mass of both the watch glass and the solid. And you can use the mass of the watch glass to determine how much solid we have after, for this reaction, and then determine the yield. So I've got the qualitative analysis set up. I have uh, three test tubes, each with about a mil of uh, dichloromethane, and then three drops of each of cyclohexene, cyclohexane, and phenylacetylene. I'm going to add, let me break here, 
of bromine and dichloromethane, a few drops of that solution to each of the test tubes, and you need to kind of report what you see and then use that and what you know about bromine to kind of rationalize the results you're seeing. So again, the cycle have seen. The cyclohexane. Give it a shake. Right? And then into phenylacetylene. Give that a shake. Oh, yeah, it's more aggressive. So that is the qualitative test with bromine and cyclohexene, cyclohexane, and phenylacetylene. All right, so I have the K104 test set up. Again, I have three test tubes, cyclohexene, cyclohexane, and phenylacetylene. And I'm going to add K104, which is, I get in frame here, this purple solution here. So I'm going to add a few drops of that to each of them, and you should write down what you observe as I add. So, one, two, three. Just a shake. Cyclohexene, one, two, three. And then phenylacetylene, one, two, three. Give that a quick shake. So there you go. So those are those three results. So mark down anything that you observed during the reaction that was notable. And again, use your knowledge of the structures of these compounds and how K104 reacts to explain what observations you just saw.